when y'all go home and you're talking to your buddies and they say, ah, he wants to take my gun away. You've heard it here. I'm on television, so everybody knows it. I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in people's lawful right to bear arms. I will not take your shotgun away. I will not take your rifle away. President Obama, before he was president, that was September 2008, saying, hey, I'm not going to come for your guns and your rifles. I'm not going to confiscate them. Well, no, but uh, the state of Missouri might. There is a House bill before the Missouri General Assembly. It's called House Bill Number 545, and it actually calls for full confiscation. It says any person who prior to the effective date of this law was legally in possession of an assault weapon or large capacity magazine shall have 90 days from such effective date to do any of the following without being subject to prosecution. One, remove the assault weapon or large capacity magazine from the state of Missouri. Two, render the assault weapon permanently inoperable. Or three, surrender the assault weapon or large capacity magazine to the appropriate law enforcement agency for destruction subject to specific agency regulations. This is just the latest attempt to get guns out of the hands of law-abiding Americans. Meanwhile, Chicago and other cities continue to have lots of gun crime. Is this part of an ongoing trend? Well, let's turn to Ken Kulkowski. He is with the American Civil Rights Union and a senior legal writer for our friends down at Breitbart.com. Thanks for joining us today, sir, and, and happy President's Day to you. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me, and happy President's Day uh, to all of us in the United States. All right. So this is what's going on in Missouri, and I don't know the Missouri General Assembly to know well, and well enough to know whether this will pass, but here's what I think is going to happen with it. If this bill doesn't pass, then they've kind of moved the yardsticks in terms of what's acceptable, and then they can come in and say, well, here's a compromise, and they'll put forward something that nobody would have thought of as acceptable two weeks ago. Well, yes, Brian, that's certainly a possibility. And if they're going to try a gun confiscation, it should be a non-starter in, in terms of American courts. Of course, in the U.S., we have the Second Amendment to our Constitution, which is the right of law-abiding citizens uh, to keep and bear arms, both for their own personal self-defense and also, frankly, as a collective uh, check on, on government power. I know that sounds shocking to people from most other countries, but this is a country that was born from revolution, and the concern was always that the citizens collectively would be able to make sure that the only people in office are the people that we vote uh, into office. There was a, a firearm confiscation in 2005 when Hurricane Katrina hit the state of Louisiana. A federal judge immediately stepped in, ordered it unconstitutional, and ordered it stopped. Now, that was a complete ban, a complete confiscation of all firearms. Uh, the courts have never had to grapple with a confiscation of one particular class of firearms, especially a made-up class like assault weapons. There is no such thing as an assault weapon. That's not a type of gun. Yeah, and that's something that we've talked about on this show, specifically in reference to the, the parameters laid out in Senator Dianne Feinstein's bill at the federal level in the U.S., that it's primarily cosmetic issues that get attached to something and, and has nothing to do with uh, how, how the gun is actually fired. Uh, Missouri is not alone in this, though. You, you've cited several other states that are moving forward on gun control that goes beyond what I think your Second Amendment allows. Aren't, is that correct? Well, that's right. A absolutely. Many of these proposals go, go beyond what the Second Amendment would allow. Of course, in our system, there's a, there can be a big difference sometimes between what the Constitution means and what the courts say the Constitution means. But in terms of, for example, New York, uh, Andrew Cuomo, the governor there, is uh, planning to run for president here in three years, and he'll likely be taking on Hillary Clinton in the Democratic primary, and he's trying to stake out his own turf as a crusader for the left. He just had his far-left New York legislature pass a bill that he signed into law that, among many other things, makes it illegal to have a handgun with more than seven rounds of ammunition. Ninety, over 90 percent of handguns have more than seven rounds. Most of them have 10 rounds. Some of them can have 12 or 15. So what he did is he made the majority of handguns 
in the state of New York illegal. And in fact, they're having to do an emergency fix because cops, police officers, the guns they carry have more than seven rounds and they would have been criminals under this new law. So it's just I, I a, understand a quick was, example of this. I, I heard of a, a gun manufacturer and the name escapes me right now. It came out over the weekend, a gun manufacturer saying, that's, that's how you feel about our firearms. We won't sell to law enforcement in your state. If regular and in fact, it's, have them, it's, it's up to a half dozen. Well, oh, it, and wow. not just one, but there's actually several firearm manufacturers now who have said that that's the case. And the big ones are being lobbied by those ones that have already done it uh, to, uh, to, to make it a blanket prohibition, to just say we're, we're going to hold each state uh, accountable for the laws that it passes. And that's their right as, uh, as uh, private companies. I, I certainly want law enforcement to have the firearms that they need to protect us, but I also want law-abiding private citizens to have the firearms that the Constitution guarantees to them so that they too can protect themselves. Because of course, when there's a crime, normally the only two people there are the victim and the criminal. It takes the police a while to get there, no matter how good they are. All right, I wanna, I wanna ask you this, I'm fairly, fairly clear on what the Second Amendment means. I, I don't read in what the commas mean or this or that. You know, it means that you are allowed to have a gun. But what about states bringing in this legislation? Is there a difference between a federal law and violating the Second Amendment and what the states do? Are the states exempted from doing some of this or the cities? Uh, we know Chicago was famous for having uh, tough gun control laws for years and it was finally overturned. Uh, do they get a pass on some of this? When the Second Amendment was first ratified in 1791, the, the whole Bill of Rights, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, all of those only provided rights against the federal government. After the Civil War in this country, when the, when the 14th Amendment was ratified in 1868, the 14th Amendment extends all the provisions of the Bill of Rights that are what we call fundamental rights, it extends them to state and local governments as well. So uh, the, the 2008 Supreme Court case that we had on the Second Amendment was about a federal uh, matter. It was here in the nation's capital. In 2010, the Supreme Court clearly held what we all knew, that the Second Amendment is a fundamental right, and therefore state and local governments uh, have no more power over guns than the federal government would have in this country. All right, so bottom line is you're in for a long court fight on some of these. Uh, let me just give you a, 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 yes. a quick warning, uh, Ken, and that is that if these bas uh, bans do not pass or they're passed and then struck down, they're going to try and bury law-abiding law gun owners in paperwork for years to come, and that'll be their way of trying to harass people out of owning guns because that's well, the experience that's we've right. had in Canada. And that will be the next round of litigation. That's exactly right. And in fact, there's already a few lawsuits that have started in states and cities that have ridiculously large, you know, manuals of forms and tests that you have to take and paperwork. That's all into court as well. Under our constitutional system, uh, not only is an outright ban unconstitutional on rights, but if a government puts too much of a burden on people to exercise their rights, that becomes unconstitutional as well. So that's, that is already in court, and I think we're going to have many more court cases coming up on that front. All right, Ken Kulkowski, thanks for joining us. He is with the American Civil uh, Rights you. Union and Breitbart.com. You can read more of his stuff there. And, of course, you can check out the blog, lilliespad.ca. We'll, uh, we'll link up to some of the latest Breitbart stories for you today. Stick